Thank you very much for coming to acknowledge and attend this happy celebration, which is a rechristening and the 50th anniversary birthday of the SS Badger. I want to especially thank the American Legion Post, Battery D, 1st Michigan Light Artillery, and also a special thanks to the Scottville Clown Band. For those of you that don't know, it, the Scottville Clown Band are celebrating their 100th anniversary this year. So, Thank you. So it's very special for us to have them here too. I hope I've not admitted anybody. We are just pleased that you're all here to have a good time in this celebration. At this time, I would like to introduce some of the people on the stage. We had State Representative David Pelsrock. <laughs> Dr. William Anderson, Director of the Michigan Department of History and Arts and Libraries. Mr. George Zimmerman, Vice President of Travel Michigan. Ed Grant, President of Lake Michigan Association of Public Broadcasters. I'm Bob Manglitz, President of Lake Michigan Car Ferry. I have my partners, Jimmy Anderson, who is Executive Vice President of Mich or Lake Michigan Car Ferry. And Don Klingen, who is a partner and Vice President of Lake Michigan Car Ferry. We acknowledge express regrets from Congressman Pete Hookstra Senator Debbie Stebenow, State Senator Gerald Van Workum. All of, all of these people have sent representatives on their behalf and we thank you for attending. At this time, I want to introduce Representative David Pelsrock. David is the chair of the House Great Lakes and Tourism Committee. David. Thank you very much. It is certainly a great day to be in Ludington, Michigan. I woke up this morning in Lansing to rain and fog. And uh, as the chair of Great Lakes and Tourism, one of the things that I'm responsible for is weather. So I ordered some weather up here in Ludington. I said I need sun, a little warmth, and because uh, we're going to celebrate the Badger. As you all know, the Badger is an intrinsic part of Ludington in northern Michigan, in Michigan, Wisconsin. The Badger has had a role, I think, in all of our lives. I remember when I was a young boy, probably 11 or 12, we took the Badger over to Wisconsin. Those are trips you never forget. So we're here to celebrate the Badger and what the Badger means to us in our community of northern Michigan. As you all know, there was a man who had the vision for the, for the Badger, and that was Charles Conrad. I think we should all... Think, thank you. When Charles Conrad <clears throat> made the decision to uh, buy the Badger and pull it out of bankruptcy, he really was looking, I think, to the past and what the Badger meant to this community and moved it into the future. And I think we have him to be thankful for this day and his vision. Charles Conrad did that at his own risk, and I think that's very significant. He invested his own money at great personal risk for the future of this community. So I think that's very significant, <clears throat> and I think we should recognize that. We all, we all know what the Badger means to us. When we think about the Badger, we go over uh, to Wisconsin, but it also has a great amount of economic importance to Ludington. Uh, the Badger employs over 500 people, uh, both directly and indirectly. 
Uh, this, our entire tourism economy in Ludington and Northern Michigan depends on the Badger. So for that, that is one of the reasons why I'm here as the chair of the Great Lakes and Tourism Committee. I go all over the state of Michigan, not only in my district, and I talk about tourism issues. People ask me, the first thing they ask me is, where, where is my district? I say Mason, Manistee, Benzie, and Leelanau counties, very proudly. Normally people, when you mention Mason County because there's a city down there near Lansing called Mason, they're a little bit confused. So I, I will tell them uh, Mason County is Ludington and Scottville. And the first thing people say is, Scottville, that's the home of the clown band. They know that and that when they think of Ludington, and thank you for being here guys. We'll see you next summer on the parade route. And then this, the, the other thing they say is the car ferry. And uh, so we, I'm just happy to be here. Uh, I'm happy to be a part of this celebration. Um, I think we owe a lot to the Ludington Car Ferry and to the Badger. And uh, with uh, no further ado, I'd like to introduce the next speaker who really needs no introduction in this area. Dr. Bill Anderson, as you all know, was the president of West Shore Community College and now he's down in Lansing serving us all well as the director of the History and Arts and Literature Department. We call that HAL. Uh, Dr. Anderson, in my mind, is one of the true leaders in Michigan tourism. I think that can be recognized both by Governor John Engler, who appointed him a couple of years ago when he formed the department, and then the recent reappointment by Governor Granholm. I think that says a lot about Dr. Anderson. You don't find too many directors of departments that have survived um, this transition. And one of the reasons Dr. Anderson has survived it is because of his integrity and his outlook and his vision for Michigan tourism. So today he represents Governor Granholm. And so I just want you to give him a warm welcome and uh, thank you for having me today. Thank you, Representative Palsrock. To begin with, I bring all of you greetings from Governor Granholm, and I brought with me a letter that she wrote to Bob Manglitz, president of Lake Michigan Car Ferry Service, and I want to read that letter. Dear Mr. Manglitz, on this noteworthy occasion of the SS Badger's 50th birthday, please allow me to extend my heartiest congratulations to you and the entire staff of Lake Michigan Car Ferry Service. I am certain your celebration today will be the perfect blend of marking Michigan's maritime history and looking forward to the Badger's promising future. Car ferries have played an important role in Michigan's maritime heritage for more than a hundred years, making significant contributions to the state's economy as a vital part of our transportation and tourism industries. In the 1950s, Ludington was home to the largest car ferry fleet in the world. It is remarkable to see the turnaround you've effected for Ludington through your dedicated efforts to bring the company back to a strong operating position. Lake Michigan Car Ferry is a success story in every sense. Michigan has a long infused history with maritime flavor. We're strategically centered in the middle of the Great Lakes. We have over 120 lighthouses, more than any other state. We have in Thunder Bay the only underwater marine sanctuary dedicated to preserving shipwrecks. At one million plus, Michigan has more boat registrations of any state. And with the variety of things to do and see in Michigan, there is an in undisputed link between our unparalleled natural resources and our rich maritime assets. Tourism gems like the Badger offer a real opportunity to extend Michigan's visitor season beyond the traditional June to September months. By supporting and promoting the uniqueness of businesses like Lake Michigan Car Ferry Service, we can significantly add to the state's economy. It's time to tell the region and the country about this national appeal destination. The SS Badger's 50th anniversary is a chance to celebrate the evolution of the Badger from its primary purpose of transporting railroad freight 
to the passenger-oriented car ferry service she is today. Your story is a credit to the vision of Lake Michigan Car Ferry founder Charles Conrad and to all the people in the company who ensure the grand tradition of the car ferry service here in Ludington for another 100 years. Again, my congratulations and good wishes on this, your triumphant day, signed Jennifer M. Granholm, Governor. Early in the life of our Department of History, Arts, and Libraries, I was asked to testify before the House Subcommittee on Travel and Tourism and present our vision for cultural tourism in Michigan. On that occasion, I offered a bold proposition suggesting that within 10 years, Michigan would be among the national leaders in cultural tourism. I'm defining cultural tourism as giving and providing the visitor with an engaging and memorable experience based upon the history, the character, the traditions, and the culture of a place. Positioning Michigan among the national leaders in cultural tourism will require that we create and develop destination attractions that have national appeal. The Auto National Heritage Area launched in June of 2002 anticipates that in 10 years we will attract three quarters of a million new visitors to our state. This destination attraction represents Michigan's preeminent role in the world as founder and manufacturer of automobiles. I'm equally enthusiastic about the vision of creating a Michigan mining heritage destination that's now being developed in the Upper Peninsula and being led by the Keweenaw National Park. At an earlier time in our history, iron ore and copper were major industries and Michigan was a national leader. Today, we announce the development of a third major cultural tourism attraction, the Michigan Maritime Heritage Destination. The Michigan Maritime Heritage Destination will be a compelling and unique visitor experience that is a national attraction and that establishes maritime history cultural tourism as part of Michigan's identity. Critical mass and expanded marketing resources will be achieved through collaboration and partnership. A 16-member steering committee representing our maritime heritage interests have been meeting with me for 10 months, developing the framework for this destination model and formulating a marketing plan. I am so pleased that many of them are here today, and I want to recognize their presence and thank them for their outstanding contributions to this exciting endeavor. And I know they're scattered around the audience, so I'm simply going to read their names, and when I finish, I'm going to ask you to join me in recognizing them with our applause. Helen Brody, representing Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary and Underwater Preserve at Alpena. Of course, already on the platform and, and a major player in the Badgers history, Don Klingen, Vice President for Marketing and one of the owners of LMC. Tom Farnquist, Executive Director of the Great Lakes Shipwreck Historical Society at Whitefish Point. Ron Garvinsky, Editor of Michigan Living. Deborah Knudsen, President and CEO of the Traverse City Convention and Visitors Bureau. Barbara Cruiser, Executive Director of the Michigan Maritime Museum in South Haven. Dick Mull, President of the Great Lakes Lighthouse Keepers Association. And Brad Jones, Executive Director of the Mackinac Area Tourist Bureau. Thank you. Our steering committee has inventoried Michigan's maritime heritage products I can tell you it's a 26-page list that includes lighthouses, maritime museums, historic ships, underwater preserves, performing artists that specialize in maritime culture, cruises, other museums that have significant maritime collections, maritime art galleries, maritime festivals, visual artists that specialize in maritime subjects, and fish hatcheries that have interpretive uh, presentations. As Governor Granholm stated in the letter that I've just read honoring the SS Badger, 
Michigan truly has some impressive maritime heritage assets. Our destination model is based on creating win-win relationships in which cross-selling is a guiding principle of how we are going to do our business. Our destination model recognizes the critical need for effective strategies that will increase awareness and market our product. Our department is thrilled to have aligned partnerships with Travel Michigan and the Michigan Association of Public Broadcasters. We expect many others to join us. Our destination model will develop a framework of themes that will provide the platform for some great maritime stories. Themes like lightkeepers and lighthouses, safety on the Great Lakes. Our destination model will engage communities that have a maritime interest throughout Michigan. And our model will give Michigan another destination of national significance. With this announcement, we are, commuting, we are communicating our intent to launch the Michigan Maritime Heritage Destination in May of 2004, offering visitors a rich new cultural tourism experience. This announcement is also a call to action. The Department of History, Arts, and Libraries will seek the critical leadership of destination marketing organizations, that is, convention and visitors bureaus and chambers of commerce throughout Michigan, helping us organize regional clusters, discovering and using maritime stories that will animate our themes, packaging the visitor experience, and implementing our marketing plan. This is a work in progress that is, that is designed to grow. The inherent synergy that collaboration will stimulate and the capacity to market this destination will drive new product development. Example, the continuing development of Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary, the acquisition of a tall ship and the basing of a cruise ship at Port Huron, and the new development plan for the Shipwreck Society at Whitefish Point are all emblematic of the maritime heritage product growth that we can expect in Michigan. We are encouraged by the interest that U.S. Senator Debbie Stabenow has expressed in this cultural tourism initiative, and we're excited about the prospects of working closely with the National Park Service. Once underway, we can envision a future where our partnership will grow and will link all of the Midwestern states and Canada in a Great Lakes maritime heritage destination. Now it is my privilege to introduce our two major marketing partners in this endeavor, and I begin by inviting George Zimmerman, Vice President of Travel Michigan, to come up and share their role in this new destination. Thank you, Bill. It's a pleasure to be here with you today for this exciting announcement, and also another great partnership between Travel Michigan and the Department of History, Arts, and Libraries. But before I get started, I was not aware of Representative Palsrock's power over the weather. But now that I know, I'll be giving his, uh, his phone number to every fair and festival in the state to contact him as we go through the summer. Uh, we are going to be a promotional partner in this new initiative. But first, I must congratulate the Lake, Ferry, the Lake Michigan Car Ferry Service on the Badger's 50th anniversary. Let's give another hand for them. You know, this company has done so much for Ludington and really for all of Michigan, bringing tens of thousands of travelers to our state to experience all that Michigan has to offer, and for that we're grateful. But back to the initiative that uh, Bill just unveiled. You know, Michigan is the Great Lakes heritage destination, with varied and exciting maritime product all along our thousands of miles of shoreline and even inland. In fact, I like to say we are the heart and soul of the Great Lakes. That's what defines us. With the development of our maritime heritage destination, we will better tell the story of our maritime history to visitors. Many travelers today are looking for a cultural heritage experience, one that educates as well as entertains. And that's what the Michigan Heritime, Maritime Heritage Destination will provide. We at Travel Michigan will provide marketing and promotion of this product uh, through our, our website, which is michigan.org, thank you very much, uh, and through our publications, advertising, uh, public relations, and our 13 welcome centers around the state. We see this as a key initiative for us. Visitors already spend $12.8 billion a year, that's $12.8 billion with a B, in Michigan. And that visitor spending supports 173,000 jobs and generates $812 million in state and local taxes. 
This in initiative means more reasons for visitors to come to Michigan and spend money at Michigan businesses, and that's a good thing. Thanks. Next is my pleasure to introduce another great friend and marketing partner in the Michigan Maritime Heritage Destination, and that is Ed Grant, President of the Michigan Association of Public Broadcasters. Well, thank you very much for uh, inviting me to this great, great event. It's uh, not only is the weather great, but the whole issue, the whole idea of rechristening the SS Badger after 50 years of service is an excellent example of Michigan's rich heritage. I'm here on behalf of the Asso Michigan Association of Public Broadcasters, and we represent 14 public television and 26 public radio stations throughout Michigan, both in the Lower and Upper Peninsula. Collectively, we reach over 98% of Michigan's residents. We're very pleased to be part of this new and exciting partnership with the Department of History, Arts and Libraries, and Travel Michigan. As many of you may know, we have collectively aired many local programs in the past on varied aspects of, Michigan's, of Michigan life, and as George indicated, we do try to educate and entertain, and our involvement with the uh, the uh, maritime heritage uh, movement uh, is really a challenge and one that we really look forward to. In our new partnership, we plan to work closely with both of these departments to better inform Michigan's residents about the great cultural resources and travel opportunities that exist in this state. The wealth of maritime heritage resources in Michigan offer a tremendous marketing opportunity of which we're proud to be a part. Congratulations to all of you who have been instrumental in maintaining one of Michigan's great treasures here and making this event possible. We anticipate that by this time next year, if not sooner, you'll be able to tune into your favorite public television station and discover many of Michigan's great maritime treasures. Thank you. At this time, I understand that Ludington City Mayor John Henderson uh, has a presentation, and John, while you're coming up, I just want to give a special thanks to you and the city of Ludington. Uh, I think the park is just beautiful. Uh, I know they were working early this morning. I, at 3 o'clock this morning, I heard the street sweeper cleaning up the sidewalks, the lawn's been mowed. The park is just beautiful, and you guys have just given us tremendous assistance. John, I thank you very much. Really, we need to thank the DPW workers, the park workers. They're the ones at the backbone of the city here, and they are the ones that made this beautiful park the way it is today. At first, I'd like just to make a couple quick remarks, and then I will present to you folks the recognition of 50 years of service, SS Badger. First, this is not just a great day for Ludington or Mason County, but for our port, Ludington. As we continue to work on keeping Ludington a working harbor, the backbone of this working harbor is the SS Badger. We have been blessed that Port Ludington has been the home of, to, to the SS Badger for the last 50 years, and we want to see it continue to be the home for the next 50 years and beyond. The Badger is not just a site of strength and boldness as it crosses Lake Michigan, but is a beautiful site of sleekness as it enters the pier heads and route to the docks on Pier Marquette Lake. There are very few people that can say they haven't gone down to see the ferry enter the harbor or watch the boat leave the docks and set sail into Lake Michigan. And even fewer can say that they haven't heard the whistle of the ferry as the boat enters or leaves our harbor. The strength and courage of the SS Badger is only matched by the owners, the employees, and their commitment to keeping this great service. As we, live, as we all know, we live in challenging times and are faced with many challenges today. We all need to join together in congratulating the owners, the staff, and the Conrad family for not only restarting the ferry service, but turning the Lake Michigan Car Ferry Service into a very successful lake crossing business. The Badger operation directly and indirectly accounts for over 500 local jobs and brings into our local economy an estimated $20 million annually. The Car Ferry serves as a major part of Ludington history and a strong partner in our economic well-being for over the last 100 years and we are committed to seeing this continue. I pledge here today my commitment and the behalf of the commitment of our city in doing our part in helping this SS Badger and the Ludington or Lake Michigan Cross Ferry Service continue another 50 years in Ludington. 
I'll read the resolution now. The resolution reads, Lake Michigan Car Ferry, SS Badger. Whereas the SS Badger will set sail May 16, 2003, marking her 50th year of service crossing Lake Michigan. And whereas the SS Badger was resurrected by Charles Conrad in 1991, and through his commitment and financial generosity, the SS Badger was transformed from a cargo transportation into an enjoyable voyage across Lake Michigan. And whereas the SS Badger is now a delightful cruise, entertaining many guests, providing shopping on the Badger, eating in the Badger Gallery and Upper Deck Cafe, taking part in activities for all ages, or just simply relaxing on the decks and soaking up the sun. And whereas the SS Badger's 50th celebration is the ideal event that coincides with Michigan Weeks, whose theme is Great Lakes, Great Traditions, celebrating Michigan heritage, and whereas the SS Badger for years to come will render the familiar sound of the whistle blowing, bringing the start of each warm season into Michigan. Now therefore be it resolved that the Ludington City Council shows appreciation for years gone by and many more years to come of watching the SS Badger sail sleekly along Ludington's lake, lake shore and into the sun in the distance creating a magnific magnificent view for everyone to enjoy. Be it further resolved that the city, Ludington City Council is proud to say that the SS Badger is one of its own city treasures and wishes them many years of service. I talked to a lot of mariners and I have some facts for you. The Badger is really middle age. As far as the Great Lakes fleet, she's just average age. In fact, she's probably younger than I am. I know she is. The other thing that I think is really interesting, the Badger is 50 years old. There are probably 60 ships in the Great Lakes fleet. And the Badger is one of the 10 fastest ships on the Great Lakes. I thought that was pretty interesting. Not bad for a 50-year-old grand lady. We're not only pleased to be celebrating the anniversary of the Badger, but we also want to express how pleased we are to be able to assist in continuing the car ferry history and the heritage. We are proud to be a part of it. The heritage of the car ferries is over 100 years old. It's interesting to note that the Badger has carried passengers for half of that time. She's carried her load for 50 of those hundred years. Um, I would be remiss if at this time I didn't mention, and I know that David had mentioned, Charles Conrad. Charles Conrad was not only my father-in-law, he was a friend of mine. Approximately 12 years ago, Chuck Conrad, whose father was a chief engineer, and his father-in-law, who was a maid on the car ferries, took it upon himself to make certain that the car ferries continued. As a matter of fact, one of Chuck's statements were, the car ferries have been running a hundred years, I want to make certain that they run for a hundred more. And it has been a challenging time over those hundred years for all of the different operators. The car ferries had actually failed twice, and when Chuck came along, they were in bankruptcy. Passenger and auto service only had never been tried before. The car ferries always had the security of carrying railroad cars. This would no longer be true in the future. In addition to this, it would take a tremendous amount of money. Chuck was not able to obtain financing. There was no government assistance. There was no subsidies. There was no government loans. There was no conventional lenders that believed that this would be a good operation. They thought it was simply too risky. That really didn't matter much to Chuck. Chuck had convictions, and he believed in and thought that the car ferry should be running again, and there should be a continuity of the car ferry heritage. He also had the courage of his convictions, and he stuck through the whole bankruptcy court procedures along with a lot of disbelievers, including myself. Well, he proved us all wrong, and we're again pleased to be here with this celebration as a result of his, his efforts 
and the continuation of the operation of the Badger. Now before I have the people come up and we're almost over, and David, you are taking, I think, the glory for the weather. I noticed the wind has changed directions and it's coming out of the west. We really needed it to come out of the east and it was supposed to. Okay. Well, before we rechristen the Badger, I want to tell you a story about the last rechristening. I've always said the Badger's been cranky from the day that it was christened. Uh, when the Badger was christened in 1953, it was pointed out that she would be launched sideways. She would come down gangway sideways. And there was not a lot of water between that gangway and the next dock. And someone said, gee, that, that ship could really create a large wave and our ship offices, shipbuilding offices are on the other side and we should protect them in the unlikely event that that big wave could actually come up and, and come up on the ground. So fortunately for them, there was a railroad track that ran between the railroad or between the water and the office buildings. Sure enough, the Badger was launched and indeed there was a large wave. The end result was six railroad cars turned upside down. <laughs> special guests and thanks again for attending this joyous occasion. Thank you. Okay, and we're here in Ludington with Charla Manglitz. Manglitz. And she was picked to uh, be the sponsor of the rechristening of the Badger because because I'm a fourth generation uh, car ferry um, member and I also have worked for the car ferry for five years. And your, uh, was it your father or grandfather that was involved with the company? My grandfather was the one that resurrected the company out of bankruptcy about 12 years ago. Okay, thank you for speaking with us. You're very welcome.
The teal ponds roar as they won't be done before. Hooray for a race down the lake. Hooray for a race down the lake. Hooray for a race down the lake. We will never shun the sail till we carry her the rail. Hooray for a race down the lake. From cold, tied in the back with a silk ribbon bow. Oh, you can't catch the eye of a serpent like that if he's watching Lake Michigan roll. Her step had the grace of an Indian male, and the many lovers' attention was swayed. But you can't catch the eye of a serpent like that. If he's watching Lake Michigan Road for the life-saving station Where the Coast Guard is waiting Sempre parato In case of a crow They will come to the rescue They will come out to get you Four boilers, we run three out of four. The railroad used to play ice 
Act like a customer can. Yeah. Buy everything in the store. <laughs> Thank you. 
purchase of $25 or more at the Badge Boutique and Shop. Wow. And, and added in seven. All right, we have these SS Badger Sailor hats. <laughs> we have these awesome back totes. Wow. Ooh. Wow. How can you wear these, Casey? Good one. I guess you can tote stuff on your back with them. Oh, no worries. <laughs> but it's 